Hey folks, welcome back to another Hearing Club video. My name is Brian and today we are going to be taking a look at two over-the-counter hearing aids by a company called Audion. We have the Atom 2 and we also have the Atom Pro 2. This is a relatively new over-the-counter hearing aid company that is actually featured on Forbes top hearing aids of 2023. They ranked number seven. So they are definitely, or at least should be on your radar when looking at an OTC hearing aid. These are some of the smallest over-the-counter hearing aids that you're gonna find on the market right now. These are ITC style hearing aids, which stands for in the canal. Very small, very discreet, they're rechargeable, and they are also very affordable. The Atom 2 starts at 189, and the Atom Pro 2 is 289. You can get both of these hearing aids on Amazon and I will have links for them in the description. You can also pick them up at Walmart and you can get them directly from Audion's website at audionhearing.com. And be sure to check out the website regularly because I believe they do run some deals and some discounts. So you wanna keep your eye on that. Now, some of the key features of these hearing aids that I like and that the company is advertising is the super, super small, discreet size. You could barely see these things when they're in your ears, which is really, really nice, especially for you folks that don't want people to know you're wearing hearing aids. I myself don't care, but I know a lot of you guys out there do. They also both come with replaceable wax filters, which I think is just huge and a damn near must have for any hearing aid at all. And the newest Atom Pro 2 actually has a really cool built-in UV light that will sterilize your hearing aids and clean them and remove all the bacteria every time you put them back in the case. Again, these are rechargeable, but at the same time, you have to remember these are at a pretty low price point, so they're not gonna have all the bells and whistles that some of the more expensive over-the-counter hearing aids have like an app they're not programmable to your hearing loss but that doesn't mean they're a bad hearing aid now i'm going to be going over all the different features in the hearing aids and we're also going to be taking a look at how close these are to prescription hearing aids using my new prescription hearing aid feature chart just check out my new over-the-counter hearing aid buying guide and i go into more detail about how and why i came up with this system and then we're also going to talk about the price per point, basically how much money you're paying per feature that these share with prescription hearing aids. So let's dive in once again into the world of over-the-counter hearing aids and take a look at what the Atom 2 and the Atom Pro 2 have to offer. So starting off, again, like I said before, these are ITC style hearing aids. ITC stands for in the canal, and these are definitely the smallest over-the-counter hearing aids that I've seen or reviewed personally so far. You could barely see these when they're in your ear. Here's a look at what the Atom 2s look like when you're wearing them. These are the hearing aids for 189. They're definitely hidden if you're looking straight on at somebody, but you know, if you get a side view of their ear and you're actually actively looking for the hearing aids, you're gonna see them, but they are very discreet they're super small and here's a look at the Atom Pro 2 now the Atom Pro 2 is a hundred dollars more at 289 and they are about 15 to 20 percent smaller on one brochure it says 15 on the other it says 20 so let's say they're 17 and a half percent smaller than the Atom 2s and I would be really surprised to find a smaller over-the-counter hearing aid I'm not saying they're not out there but you know it would it would surprise me these things are tiny now again, I wanna stress that these hearing aids are not loaded with features. If you are a tech savvy person that wants to be able to adjust your hearing aids using an app, you know, answer and receive phone calls using your hearing aids, these are not for you. But on the flip side, if you're not a tech savvy person and you just wanna be able to get a hearing aid that you could just pick up, put in your ear and bam, you know, you're ready to go, then the simplicity of these hearing aids might appeal to you. You just take them out of the case, find a dome that fits for you, pop them in, and you are ready to go. There is absolutely no complicated setup to get these up and running. Now the Atom 2 and the Atom Pro 2 both come with two different types of domes and each type has three different sizes, a small, medium, and large. The first type of dome is a kind of like a cup shaped dome. And then the other style of dome that it comes with is more of a tulip type of dome. If you guys know what a tulip is, it kind of looks like this, but it has two slits 
cut in it. And I'm gonna show you guys a tip on how to actually turn these into a tulip if you wanna try it yourself. Now, when I say these are occluding domes, what that means is they're going to seal up your ear pretty good and you're going to get quite a bit of the occlusion effect. The occlusion effect is basically the byproduct that you're going to get when you completely seal up your ears. To simulate the occlusion effect, you can just take your fingers, plug your ears, and start talking, and you're going to notice that you hear your own voice a lot more. It's going to sound kind of hollow. It might sound a little bit echoey, and for some folks, this really bothers them a lot. For me, it doesn't really bother me too much. Now, if you want to get less occlusion, you don't want to hear your own voice as much, and you don't want that plugged up feeling you can take the tulip style dome just grab a pair of scissors and you're going to want to cut two slits in them lengthwise across from each other or opposite each other and when you're done it should look like this the one thing about this is you're going to not have as much occlusion but you might run into a little bit of feedback if you start turning the volume up my suggestion to you if occlusion is an issue for you is cut these slits into the dome put them in your ears. If you can get enough volume without any feedback, then you're good to go. But if you require more volume, as you start turning that volume up, you are gonna start getting some feedback. So you might have to ditch the tulips and occlude your ears with the cup style or use the tulips that don't have a slit cut in them. That's gonna allow you to get more volume without any feedback. So there's, there's always a give and a take, but this is something that you can try. Now the occlusion effect with this type of dome is, you know, to be expected with hearing aids. With any hearing aid, what I tell folks is, you know, start out with the most open dome that you can get. If you're able to turn the volume up enough without any feedback, then you're good to go. But if you require more volume, then you are going to have to start occluding your ears more. And again, this is to be expected with all hearing aids that use rubber domes. Now on that subject of volume, let's talk about the volume capabilities with these hearing aids. These are not going to work if you have a moderate to severe, a severe or a severe to profound hearing loss. Now, most over-the-counter hearing aids are not going to work for people with those losses. So don't buy these expecting to be able to get a crazy amount of amplification. These are not going to do it. And that's okay. Most over-the-counter hearing aids, or all of them really, to, to be honest, are not advertised to be able to work for those hearing losses. One of the first tests I do with over-the-counter hearing aids is I see how much amplification they have and I try to crank up the volume to the maximum and see if I don't get any feedback. With these hearing aids, both the Atom 2 and the Atom Pro 2, I cranked up the volume. There's five different volume levels and we'll talk about that here in a second, but I cranked it up full on gain, as much amplification as, as these provide and I was getting feedback. I was not able to consistently turn these up without feedback. And I had the most occluding domes in my ears. I sealed them up as much as I could. I mean, I, I smushed them in as far as they would go. If I spent enough time, you know, kind of rotating them until I found the perfect spot, I was able to use them for maybe a couple of minutes without feedback, but any slight movement of the hearing aid would cause feedback. So there's five different volume levels and I was able to consistently get up to volume level four without feedback, but five was really, really pushing it. Your ears might be different. You may be able to turn the volume all the way up to five without feedback, but my ears, it was not the case. Now to change the volume of the hearing aids, it's super, super simple. Each hearing aid has one circular button in the middle to change the volume. You just quickly press and release the button. You'll get one beep, two beeps, three beeps, all the way up to five beeps. And then once you're at level five, which is the highest volume level, you press it again and it will bring you back down to one and you just start the cycle over. Each hearing aid is independent of the other. These do not talk to each other. You cannot sync up the volume. Um, on a lot of prescription hearing aids, if you turn up the right hearing aid, they'll both go up. And if you turn down one of the hearing aids, they'll both go down. These are not set up that way. They are both set individually, which is not a good thing, not a bad thing. It just is what it is. Now, these hearing aids come with different programs. Programs are just different presets or different settings for different listening environments or listening situations. Uh, prescription hearing aids have these. I actually, I haven't come across a over-the-counter hearing aid that doesn't have programs, but these are no exception. They also have programs. There's four different listening modes or programs. To change the program, instead of just quickly pressing and releasing the button, you're gonna hold the button. And just like the volume, each hearing aid has its own independent program. So you can have, 
you know, the left hearing aid in program one, and you can have the right hearing aid in program four if you wanted. You hold the button, you're going to get, again, either one, two, three, or four different beeps, and they're a little bit lower in frequency. So when you change the volume, it's a higher pitch beep. When you change the programs, it's a lower pitch beep. Super, super easy to use. Um, you should have no trouble with them. Program number one is for normal conversations. Program number two is the noise suppression mode or the background noise mode. Program three is the road or vehicle mode. And then program four is set for outdoor. I imagine outdoor mode is set for you know, wind noise reduction. I know that's how it is in prescription hearing aids. When you set it to the outdoor mode, the wind noise reduction kicks on all the way. And, you know, when you're wearing hearing aids, if you get a big gust of wind, it usually sounds like really, really bad. But with outdoor mode enabled, it really calms it down. And in prescription hearing aids like the Jabra's, the Philips, it virtually gets rid of that crackling, really bad distorted wind noise. With these, I was actually pretty surprised. I wasn't expecting too much with the different programs. Normally, programs don't really do all that much with OTC hearing aids. But I, I turned the air conditioner on to maximum. I had the fan all the way up and I stuck my ear right next to the air conditioner and it did did quiet down that wind noise it wasn't so harsh it wasn't so crackly it actually did suppress it you know a, a pretty decent amount so I was surprised about that it actually did something as far as the other modes I didn't really notice too many differences now I want to quickly tell you guys that even with prescription hearing aids uh, and this is why I'm not saying that this is a negative thing for these hearing aids but with prescription hearing aids a lot of times I'll set these programs up for my patients and they will tell me that you know they tried the different programs there's programs like TV mode, um, restaurant mode, outdoor mode, music mode, all these different programs. And a lot of my patients, I'd probably say like a good three quarters of them tell me that they don't really hear any difference between their programs other than the volume changing and they don't really utilize them other than restaurant mode or hear and noise mode with the job. That is an exception. That program works very, very well. That's not the case with me. That is the case with most of my patients. Now, back to the background noise suppression or program number two, this is nowhere near the sophistication of prescription hearing aids, background suppression mode. Don't buy these thinking that you're going to get the same quality or same sophistication or same benefit of the noise reduction. They are not there, guys. But for a 200 to $300 over the counter hearing aid. It did work decent. You know, I was, I was kind of surprised it worked. Okay. Now what I would love to see in an over the counter hearing aid, and I have come across this a couple times is instead of trying to do like a road vehicle outdoor, you know, different programs with a hearing aid that is not programmable based off of your audiogram like these, I would much rather see different programs being different hearing loss types. For example, I'd like to see maybe program one being a flat loss for somebody that has, you know, equal hearing loss across all the frequencies, just kind of like a flat line, a high frequency loss, and then a low frequency loss. That would be much nicer in my opinion, but you know, these don't have that. This might be neither here nor there, but that's what I would like to see in over the counter hearing aid. So for all you manufacturers out there listening, if you're going to do programs and your hearing aids are not super advanced, not programmable, then give us a flat, give us a high frequency and give us a low frequency option so that people with different types of hearing losses can be accommodated by your hearing aids. For the price, I think they're doing okay in this department. Now let's talk about the sound quality. As far as the sound quality goes, um, I think they got the job done. Again, if you have a mild to moderate hearing loss, the sound quality is right around, you know, what you would expect for a lower priced hearing aid such as these. They are not set to your specific hearing loss. They don't sound as good as those higher priced, more advanced prescription hearing aids but they definitely don't sound bad. Don't get me wrong. These are not bad sounding hearing aids. They are just not in that same tier as your prescription hearing aids. So don't expect to get the same sound quality as a more expensive prescription hearing aid. Don't expect any over-the-counter hearing aid to reach that level of sound quality. But for the price, these are definitely right around where they should sound. 
And you also have to remember, I know I say this all the time. I know it's probably getting cliche-ish me saying this, but everybody's hearing loss is different. If you have a flat hearing loss, these should do great. If you have a high frequency or a low frequency hearing loss, I think these are still going to help you out. You know, try them, give them a shot. They are on the Forbes 2023 best hearing aid list and the sound quality is okay. You know, what sounds good for me may not sound good for you and vice versa. Now, something I love to talk about and I love pointing out with <laughs> hearing aids is wax guards. These have wax guards that you can replace. Yes, all you manufacturers out there watching these videos, make sure your hearing aids have wax guards. Even the hearing aids that look more like a AirPod, you know, a wireless earbud, put some kind of wax guard system in those as well. I've had a pair of earbuds that look like AirPods. I've had a pair of wired earbuds, just like the ones I use in my videos. Hold on. Like this style right here. Even these style hearing aids or these style headphones, you take off this piece of rubber, Look at all that wax in there. When I try to get this wax out of there, it's gonna smush into the screen. These screens, they do come off, but they're glued on there. And they will plug up your hearing aids and there's no way to really clean this wax out. That's that little dot right there. See that little yellow dot? That is all ear wax. Once enough gets in there, the hearing aid is gonna be toast. It's not gonna work. So I don't care what manufacturer you are make sure you put wax guards replaceable disposable wax guards in your hearing aids please nobody wants to spend 300 dollars on a pair of hearing aids and then have to throw them away because wax got in there and ruined it now the other nice thing about these hearing aids is right there on amazon when you purchase these hearing aids or when you click on them there's a cleaning kit it comes with another brush it comes with a whole set of wax guards for like 12 bucks so you don't have to go searching high and low for which wax guards are going to work for these hearing aids because they are all different they're all different sizes. I imagine it would suck to buy a set of wax guards just to find out they don't fit. When you buy these hearing aids, when you click on these hearing aids in Amazon, it will tell you this part is also suggested to buy with these hearing aids and it is a cleaning kit for your Audion hearing aids. So I give them a big round of applause for that. Good job, Audion. You got the wax guard part right. Big time points for that. Now, like I said before, these are rechargeable hearing aids and they are advertised as lasting 24 hours. Uh, I believe on the website, it says 24 hours and then somewhere else I read, it said 20 hours. So they're advertised to last about 22 and a half hours. The charger is a portable charger. It has indicator lights with the Audion Pro 2 hearing aids. When you put them in the charger, you'll get either a red or a green indicator light when you put it in. And that will tell you whether the hearing aid is dying, dead or fully charged. Green means it's fully charged. Red means it's not fully charged. And then in the Atom 2, same thing. The lights are at the bottom of the case. And it is not a portable charger. This case has to be plugged in for the hearing aids to charge. And if the lights are red when you put the hearing aids in, that means that they are charging and they need to be charged. If they're green, they are fully charged. You are good to go. So if you are wearing your hearing aids and one of them dies, these chargers are small enough that you can easily walk around with them in your pocket. You could put them in your purse. And if your hearing aids die, you could just pop them in the case really quick on the go, even when it's unplugged and they will start charging your hearing aids. They take three hours to fully charge the hearing aids. That being said, you can easily get 24 hours if you have your charging case with you. Without the charging case, how long do these last on a single charge? Well, I'm testing that right now. I'm gonna have to edit this part out of the video and I will let you guys know how long the hearing aids lasted on one single charge. Some of you guys have been asking me about that and I will be including that in this video. All right, guys, so with the update, these hearing aids lasted over 20 hours, easily. However, I had it on the lowest volume setting, so volume one on both hearing aids. I just put them on my counter. I left the TV on all day. So there was actually sound playing all day and they lasted over 20 hours. I'm gonna be honest here, I didn't expect them to last that long. I thought maybe at the most, maybe like 15, 16 hours, but no, they lasted over 20 hours. So kudos to you guys. And if your case has a full charge, it's been plugged in, it's fully charged. When unplugged, that battery bank will provide three full charges. So you can let the hearing aids 
completely die, put them in the charger, and they will fully charge the hearing aids. You can repeat that process three times. So you will get three full charges out of one fully charged case. Now, a really great feature that they added in the more expensive Atom Pro 2 for $289 is the case has a built-in UV sterilizing light, which is pretty awesome. So whenever you put the hearing aids in the charger, this UV light will kick on and it will actually sterilize and clean and remove and kill the bacteria that's on the hearing aids. Of course, it will only remove 99.9% .9 of the bacteria, but still, it's pretty cool. Where I work and at home, I have one of those drying chambers or drying boxes, uh, the perfect dry lux. There's a link for that in the description as well. That's going to dry your hearing aids and it's going to have a UV light that sterilizes it. Well, this charger for the Atom Pro 2 has a built-in UV light, which is awesome. It'll only turn on if the case is plugged in and it will turn on and last for five minutes. So it will run through a five minute cleaning cycle. So the differences between the Atom 2 and the Atom Pro 2, I know I talked about this already. The Atom 2 is 189, which is a fantastic price. And the Atom Pro 2 is 289. And what you're getting with that extra $100 is a smaller hearing aid. Again, 15 to 20% smaller. I think we determined 17.5% smaller than the Atom 2. You're getting the case that has a built-in UV light for sterilizing the hearing aids. And the fact that the Atom Pro 2 charger is a portable charger with a built-in battery. The Atom 2 is not a portable charger. And it also comes with a more advanced chip. The chip on the Atom 2 is the A2 chip. And with the Atom Pro 2, you're getting the A2 Pro chip. That's supposed to offer better sound quality. Personally, between the two different hearing aids, I didn't hear a difference, but I want to talk about that really quick. I've only had these hearing aids for a, a few weeks. I've only worn them for about a week and a half, and I'll switch off between the two to make sure there's no issues and make sure, you know, I don't run into any problems so that I can tell you guys about it in the review. But with that being said, I want to talk about my patients that come in to see me. A lot of the patients don't notice a, a big difference between let's say the Jabra and the Philips, I'd say maybe 50% of them don't hear a difference. Some people do hear a difference. Some people can tell right away there's a difference, but a lot of people don't. Now, if I have a patient that's been wearing their current hearing aids for two or three years and they come in and they wanna try out a new set of hearing aids, those people notice a big difference immediately because they're so used to their current set of hearing aids, they know exactly how they sound. And when they pop in these new, more advanced hearing aids, like the Jabra, the Philips, the Rexon, they're like, wow, that is, a, that is a big difference. That's a noticeable difference. So if there's a difference in sound quality, which they advertise between the A2 and the A2 Pro chip, I don't think I've wore the hearing aids long enough to really notice the difference. But when I put them in and I swap them out, I don't really notice a difference. So I'm sorry, that's just my personal experience. Now we're going to compare them to a prescription hearing aid using the prescription hearing aid feature chart that I've developed. And this is gonna show us just how close to a prescription hearing aid these are. Do they have some of the same features as prescription hearing aids? We're gonna look at how many of those features it has. And then we're gonna take the price of the hearing aids at the end, and we're gonna divide it by the amount of features it has so that we can get our price per point or price per feature. And this is just kind of a way to gauge how much you're paying per feature. So you can kind of use that as a reference when shopping for over-the-counter hearing aids. First on that list is, are they programmable based off of your audiogram? These are not programmable based on your audiogram. So it gets zero points for that. Number two on the list, and these are in priority of importance in my opinion, wax guards. These do have wax guards. And not only do they have wax guards, but they make them very easily available. You can find them on Amazon. You just type in Audion wax guards and they'll pop right up. You don't have to go searching high and low. If I can give these a point and a half, I would, but I don't want to make this any more complicated than it already is. So they do get the point for the wax guard. The warranty and the trial period. These come with a standard one year manufacturer warranty and not a 30 day trial, a 45 day trial. That is really, really good for an OTC hearing aid. And on top of that, they even come with an optional protection plan. So if you lose the hearing aids, if you destroy the hearing aids, if you take them swimming and they are destroyed, you can get a replacement. It's $4 a month for this protection plan. Needless to say, it gets a point for the warranty in the trial period. 
Uh, the IP rating of these hearing aids. I could not find an IP rating. I got a hold of the manufacturer and they don't have an IP rating. So do not get these wet. Do not get these dirty. Do not drop them. They are not rated. So I don't know exactly how durable they are, but there's no standard. So it gets zero points for the IP rating. Um, next on the list is Bluetooth and hands-free. If it has Bluetooth, it gets half a point. If it has hands-free, it gets half a point. If it has both, it gets one point. It gets zero points. These do not have Bluetooth, cannot connect them to your phone, and there's no ability to take phone calls and use the hands-free feature. Zero points. Next on the list is an app. Do these hearing aids have an app? They do not. So zero points. And then next on the list is programs. These hearing aids do have programs. I think they could be improved a little bit, but they are there. They do offer some benefits. So it gets a point for the programs. And then the last option, this is a bonus category for battery selection. If I find a hearing aid, that gives you the option of both battery powered, like replaceable batteries or rechargeable, I would give them an extra bonus point. These do not have that option, not that I could see anyway. I haven't found a hearing aid other than prescription hearing aids that give you the option between replaceable batteries and rechargeable. Some people may not want a rechargeable hearing aid. Why? Because the rechargeable battery is not gonna last forever. It is gonna have less and less capacity as time goes on. So the grand total is three points. This means it is not even close to a prescription hearing aid, but remember you're paying 189 to 289. So I wouldn't expect it to be. This is a pretty normal amount of prescription features for a hearing aid in this price range out of the hearing aids that I've reviewed so far. Now, the 189 Atom 2 price per point, if we take the 189 and divide that by three, because it has three features, you are getting $63 per point. That is an excellent price per point. That is very good. I've reviewed hearing aids that have $150 price per point, which is kind of spendy. $100, so $63 is a really, really good price per point. I think $189 for this Atom 2 is very, very respectable and a decent price. So if you're looking for an OTC hearing aid, go ahead and give it a shot. If you don't like it, you can return them. And then the 289 Atom Pro 2, it's price per point since it's 289, divide that by three features and you get $96 per point, $96 per prescription feature. This is a pretty normal amount that I've seen for over-the-counter hearing aids so far. Uh, again, the more I review these different hearing aids, the more we're gonna see what a good fair price is. So that's how they stack up against prescription hearing aids. Now, the conclusion. These are decent hearing aids for the price, in my opinion. Again, for a sub $300 hearing aid, I wouldn't expect it to be anywhere close to a prescription hearing aid. There may be one out there, okay? I haven't reviewed it yet. If you guys know of one, let me know. But they will definitely help somebody with a mild to moderate hearing loss. Remember, Johnny tried these hearing aids with his severe and severe to profound hearing loss, and they just would not work for him at all. That's to be expected with hearing aids like this, but there are exceptions out there, and I've reviewed one of them. Um, I really like the small size of these hearing aids. These are officially the smallest over-the-counter hearing aids I've reviewed so far. So big points for that. And I also really like the UV light built into the case. That's pretty cool. I've only seen one other OTC hearing aid that has that feature. I'm working on the review now. Now, the million dollar question, is the extra $100 for the Atom Pro 2 worth it? I hate to do this to you guys, but I'm gonna leave that up to you to decide. Personally, I'd probably be more comfortable paying the 189 for the Atom 2. $63 per point is a damn good price. And if I were looking for a low cost, decent over-the-counter hearing aid, I'd probably go with the Atom 2. But if you like those other features and you want literally the smallest over-the-counter hearing aid, the most discreet over-the-counter hearing aid you can find, the Atom Pro 2 would be a pretty solid choice. These don't have all the features that I like in an over-the-counter hearing aid, but that's me. I'm tech savvy. I want an app. I want something, you know, more advanced, but that's just me personally. This would be a fine hearing aid for anybody out there that isn't needing or wanting all those techie, you know, bells and whistles. 
So that's going to do it for the review, guys. Now, remember, if you guys want to support the Hearing Club, you could either donate through PayPal or we also now have channel memberships. The channel membership is, I think it's like $2.99 a month. You can cancel anytime you want. It's not like a lifetime subscription. You're going to get some custom emotes that we're working on. Whenever you leave a comment, we're going to have some special emotes. You get a special icon. Whenever you make a comment, people will know that you're a supporter of the Hearing Club and you're going to get a shout out in one of the videos. Which reminds me, these are the folks that have supported so far. So our very first, very first channel member, very first supporter of the Hearing Club is Jeff T. Thank you, Jeff. Much appreciated, sir. We appreciate every single one of you guys that sign up and support the channel. Again, even if it's for one month, this is just so cool. And thank you guys so much. We also have John. Thank you, John. We have Slender MMO. George Denton. These are our very first members of the channel. You guys are awesome. Well, you guys are all awesome, but you guys are my favorite. Okay. And then we have Scott, The Nash, Aaron M, Barbara D, Sherry K. These may or may not be family members, but <laughs> regardless, we thank every single one of you guys and ladies. Master Soul, probably the coolest name so far. Thank you, Master Soul. Big shout out to Master Soul. Hannah M, Lunar Peak, Alex S, Ryan M, Karen D, Johnny, and another person with probably one of the coolest names, <laughs> Bushwhacker Heck. I don't know what the heck that means, but thank you, Bushwhacker Heck. Thank you, all of you guys. And now for the PayPal supporters. I'm going to actually go through all of you guys really quick because you guys were actually the you guys were the first supporters of the channel even before we had memberships. So, we've got Electronics, not Electronics, Electronics USA, Greg L, Craig E, Scott C, my man Scott. What's up, Scotty? Brian H, George D, Richard W, James S, and Nakia C. You guys are freaking awesome. We love you. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you all for even watching these videos and leaving the great comments. It means so much to me. If you guys want to check out the over-the-counter hearing aid buying guide, it's going to be right here. These things are brand new. There's a lot of options and I'm just trying my best to be able to inform you guys and help you make a good informed decision. So I hope it helps. Oh, and Jack and Mina say hello and they will be back in one of the videos. Don't you worry. Bye guys.